In this tutorial, you will learn how to animate a silly monster jumping up into the air step by step. So if you are ready to learn one of the animation workflows of the pros, follow along with this tutorial. I will demonstrate how to create this animation in OpenToons, a free and open source 2D animation software. However, the working method that we'll be using can be applied to any animation software and any animation technique, even 3D animation. If this really is the first time ever that you're animating something, you might want to do our other animation exercise for beginners first. It's a little bit easier and I go a little bit slower about the basic functions of open tunes and the principles of animation in that tutorial. With that being said, let's jump into it by finding out how our monster is actually going to look like. I want to approach this character design systematically. So first I try very rough shapes for our monster. Do I want him to be more flat and squashed? Do I want him to be square? Do I want him to be very long and thin? And then to keep our process very goal oriented, you will see me always trying different variations for the same body part. I'll try different eyes, different eye distances, different ears, different tails, different arms, and so on. And the idea behind this is to see all your options on paper. If you just decide to use the first character design that comes to your mind, you will always have the fear in the background, what if there is a better character design? But with this process, you will more or less literally have tried every possible combination, every possible option, and you decided for these ears, for these horns, for these arms, for a reason, because you saw the other options. I recommend to erase as little as possible so you also can see the options that don't feel right to you, and that helps you to decide for the options that you would like to take. It's also a good idea to work quite rough and maybe as small as you are comfortably drawing. Because if you work too big, you'll be tempted to already create details and work on details that you shouldn't be working on yet. In a professional production, this character design phase is done by professional character designers and can take weeks, sometimes months to be completed. But because this is only a little exercise, I decide on a final shape for my monster relatively quickly. And now at the end of this character design process, I'm creating a model sheet. In the model sheet, you record how tall your character is, at which height you have the arms. You maybe draw him from a couple different angles to really define and set in stone how your character has to be drawn, not only by you, but also maybe by other animators who are working with the same character design. Another thing that I can highly recommend is that once you are getting closer to your final look, you should start just making some fun and creative poses with your character model. So you see the character design in action, and can apply final tweaks to the model sheet if necessary. This is also a very important step if you are given a model sheet during a production. The first thing I would do is to just draw the character in a bunch of different poses to get to know how to draw the character. And then once again, you can take this sheet and always refer to it when you have an extreme emotion to keep the character design consistent throughout an entire animated film. And now it's time to jump into OpenTunes and get our animation project set up. If you've never opened an animation software in your life, you should probably check out our basic OpenTunes tutorial first. So in OpenTunes, I create a new project, give my scene a name, and the full HD resolution 1920 times 1080 pixels is fine, 24 frames per second is great, so I create that scene. Personally, I prefer working in vector layers rather than bitmap layers, so I can select single lines and resize them. So I set them up as the default layer type in the preferences. In the drawing tab, I have my default layer type set to tunes vector layer. 
I exported the model sheet that we drew earlier as a JPEG image. You could, if you work on paper, just take a photo with your smartphone and then you can drag and drop that into OpenTunes. I tell OpenTunes to import the image so it actually copies it into the project folder and you don't need to worry about losing that image. Now you can use the animate tool to scale down the entire column that the model sheet is in and place it down here at the bottom of the screen. This way there's enough space for the monster to jump up into the air above him. I place the three quarter view of the character in the center because I actually want to trace him or at least use the model sheet as a guideline to design my first pose. Speaking of which, to find the first pose that our character will be in, we jump out of OpenTunes back into our sketchbook. We're going to talk about different aspects of acting in its own video series a lot later in this 2D animation class. But for now, there is one thing that I want you to think about at least, namely, why is the character jumping up into the air? Is he trying to reach something that's maybe up there? Did he get good news and is jumping up and down in excitement? This is actually the path that I wanted to go with. I was imagining our monster character is guarding a door down there in cute monster hell and he just got the news that he was promoted to guard an even more dangerous, more impressive door. So I know that for the first post I want to put him in a little bit of like a listening like, oh, what are you saying? Like he's already kind of like happy, kind of like, oh, this is good. This is good news. I'm listening, I'm listening. And then it leads to the jump where it's like, yeah, that's great. So with all of that in mind, let's start by scribbling different possible variation for that pose. This step of the animation process is called thumbnailing for a reason. Draw very small so you don't get caught up in details and just try different variations to push the message, the emotion, the energy that you need to capture for this particular moment in time. And the piece of advice that beginners really need to hear is that you need to work with the lean of the body. Put a, a curve throughout the entire body. It's called the line of action. Lean your character forward, backward. Try if that strengthens the pose. Tilt the head in different directions and make sure that there's some sort of energy flowing through your character. One thing that will happen very often when you're doing thumbnails that you will discover poses that aren't right for that moment you're currently working on, but you'll be like, oh, this is a cool pose. I should use that later. For example, I really like this pose where he's just leaning back on his trident, but it's not right for this moment. I want him to be in an active listening state and, you know, he's on duty and not leaning back in this moment. So what I could do is make a note, put that pose away somewhere so that later when I do another moment in my short film, I can rediscover and refine that particular pose. In a professional production, you can end up with 20, 50, 100 thumbnails before you decide on what pose communicates exactly what you want your character to express in that moment. When you think this is the pose that I want to start my animation with, it's time to jump back into OpenTunes. The first thing I want to make sure is that our model sheet layer is exposed for quite a few frames so we can see it throughout the entire animation. Click on the create vector level button above the timeline. You can give it a name and this is a level that we will put all our rough animation lines on. You can lower the opacity of the model sheet and now you can start to transfer our scribbled pose onto the model sheet. The model sheet will help you to keep the volumes. And there's actually one thing that I'll be doing a little bit different from the model sheet. I didn't like the position of the tooth. So I changed it to be in the empty space between the eye and the nose. This way the tooth really has a spotlight place to shine on its own and it doesn't get muddy at the edge of the character where all these other lines are. So this is an example where I 
tweak the model sheet even after I already drew it and imported it. I also trace the horn and the ear from the model sheet to make sure that they have the same exact length. Now this is a little bit dangerous, it can make your animation a little bit stiff if you always trace stuff from your model sheet, because if there is perspective for shortening, then elements could actually change in size. Also, the copy pasted body parts might feel disconnected to the rest of the body. Often you want there to be a flow, and if you just slap something onto your drawing, there is not a smooth connection, there often is a sharp corner. In my case though, I really like that sharp corner between the ear and the head. It really makes the ear and head feel very separate and distinct. So in my case, I actually like the sharp corner, but oftentimes, especially if it's in the shoulder area, you might want a smoother, more flowing connection. If it's important for you to keep a length or to keep a size, it can be very helpful to just copy it from the model sheet or a previous pose. The working method we are using right now is called pose to pose animation. We're going from the most important poses first to less important poses. The first set of poses we are designing are the so-called storytelling key poses. In our case, we need one pose at the ground, which is the one we designed right now, one in the air and one back on the ground to understand the action of him jumping up and coming back down. I need to take a quick moment to thank my Patreon supporters over here. Thanks to you, it's possible that I can make detailed tutorial series with animated examples. If you won't like the way how I teach animation and you want me to make more tutorials like this one, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter as well. It's really appreciated and I'm working on more rewards and benefits. One thing we have on Patreon right now is the group mentor. Once a month, you can show what you are working on, and that can be anything, an animation exercise, a short film, just a story idea or a character design. I'll annotate over it, give you valuable advice, and this way you can improve not only the thing that you're working on, but also sharpen your general art and animation skills. All right, but now let's get back to the tutorial. The next pose we are designing is the second storytelling key of the monster hanging up in the air before coming back down. For this pose, I see two challenges. First, I want the emotion to be as strong as possible so that you can really see the joy in his jump. And we want the pose to be very readable, especially the area with the arm, ears, and the trident is a bit problematic because everything is overlapping here. So we need to make sure that especially the ends of these elements, the hand, the trident, and the tip of the ears have their own space in the silhouette so they clearly stick out and are clearly readable. I activate onion skin by clicking on the red and the green dots next to the playhead so I can see the previous and the following frame shining through. I also use the model sheet layer to line it up with my new pose and make sure that I keep the volume of the belly, the volume of the head, and we're gonna steal the trident from the previous pose. Notice how I mark the area where the fingers are wrapping around the trident, because I don't want the trident to slide along his hand. Keeping such a position of contact the same is very important for a realistic looking animation. In the end, I will deactivate onion skin again by double clicking on the red and green onion skin marker dot above the playhead, and I will use the arrow keys and period and comma to flip between the two drawings. This way I get a very, very rough idea already how these poses will work together in the animation. You can probably imagine what happens next. We create the third and last storytelling key pose after the landing back on the ground. I decided against having a loop you could have a loop if you have a character who's just so excited that they jump up and down and up and down again and again and again. Then in my case, I decided against a loop because I want to have some development here. I want the character to go from I'm listening to, whoa, that's great, to a more relaxed, like, ah, 
I'm so proud. I'm so happy that I made it. So here I design a pose where he looks very content and proud. Once again, I use the previous pose and the model sheet as a reference. Sometimes I switch off onion skin to flip through my three poses and um, I experiment a little bit with the tail. First I had it wrapped around him on the ground, but then I figured that it would probably need too much time to place the tail there after the jump. So I chose a more simple pose where the tail is just to the left of his body still up in the air. This also has a storytelling reason. If you have too much going on with the tail at the end of your post, the audience will just keep looking at the tail when they should actually be reading the character's face. And with that, we have the three storytelling keys. We can flip between them and we already see this animation coming alive just a little bit. Of course, we'll be adding more and more drawings to get a smooth looking motion in the end. That's it for part one of this tutorial. In part two, we'll be adding extreme keyframes and breakdowns and do lots more to make this animation look fantastic. If you're eager to learn to improve your animation skills quickly, you might want to check out our premium tutorials. For example, this one about the basics of physics, where we animate this fun animation with a heavy orc and a small goblin. Or maybe you'd be interested in motion design and how to animate this logo animation. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll be there for the next part of this tutorial. Keep on animating.